Cinnamon rolls? Yes, they were very synonymous. All seven of them? Yes, it's a lucky number. But, uh, aren't you allergic to cinnamon? Yes, now hand me that epi pen behind you. From ghoulies and ghosties, and long-leggedy beasties, and long-leggedy beasties, and things that go bump in the night. Good Lord! Deliver us! Deliver us! Hello, Spooks and Spookettes. Count Rahoon here, and tonight I am giving you part one of a two-part very special movie review that I believe is tailor-made for this year's spoopy season. If I can get them out in time. Before we get started, be sure to like and subscribe to Count Rahoon Presents. And thank you for all of your likes, comments, and views. I'm always open to feedback and suggestions for other movies to review, both good and bad. If you want to go a step further, consider becoming a patron through our Patreon page. If you pledge $5 a month, you will get exclusive access to our private Facebook group, as well as new content early and ad-free. Go to patreon.com forward slash drahoon and help us feed the trolls. Forest trolls, to be exact. Yeah, I co-host a show with a forest troll, and he likes bun. He likes big bun, and he cannot lie. Bun is in the, the, the bread. You know what? Let's just get into the heart of the matter. And hopefully you won't feel the need to drive a stake through it. <laughs> the pitchforks and torches might come out for this one, Spooks and Spookettes. Tonight's video contains a controversial, albeit well-thought-out opinion that might get me excommunicated from the world of monsters. You have been warned. The monster fans of the world have been very fortunate this year. And hey, Godzilla Minus One hasn't come out yet, so we might even get more fortunate. In April, we saw the incomparable Nick Cage don the cape in the horrifically comic romp Renfield co-starring Nicholas Holt as the titular character, and Aquafina. Four months later, we were given another film to sink our teeth into, this time more of a straight horror film based on a chapter from the novel, featuring Corey Hawkins, Dustin Dalmatian, and Liam Cunningham from Game of Thrones. The film, The Last Voyage of the Demeter, or as the internet has dubbed it, Dracula on a Boat. How do these films stack up? Well, right off the bat, pun intended, I would say that Renfield is the better of the two films, and I will be happy to explain. But first, let's explore the Demeter, which is the more recent out of the two. The film opens up on the crew of the Demeter loading up for their journey from the port of Varna in Eastern Europe to London, England. A band of travelers will unload about 50 large boxes onto the Demeter that may or may not contain a vampire in at least one of them, all of which have a strange dragon insignia. The travelers drop off the cargo, 
And somehow their incessant crossing of themselves and muttering, please God forgive us, doesn't set off nearly as many red flags as it ought to. While loading in, one of the boxes starts to slip and fall. Probably because one of the higher hands saw the insignia on the box and knew what he was getting into and decided to sit this one out. The box is about to fall right on top of Toby, the grandson of Captain Elliot, played by Liam Cunningham. Just in the nick of time, Dr. Clemens, played by Corey Hawkins, swoops in and saves the boy. Out of gratitude, Captain Elliot allows Dr. Clemens to board the Demeter as a crew hand in exchange for passage to London. The journey starts off normal enough, and we know this because Captain Elliot's narration voice is soothing and calm, as he should be, because this is going to be his last voyage as the captain of the Demeter, and I say that without a hint of foreshadow. He plans to hand the boat over to his first mate Wojciech, played by Dustin Dalmatian. That is, until strange things begin to happen. At first they find a dog with its throat torn out, and then before they know it, the livestock is completely drained of blood. And then, one by one, the crew gets knocked off by a giant, anemic-looking bat. They put two and two together and realize that there is something amiss about those boxes down below deck. They open up one of them, and don't find Dracula, but a pretty Transylvanian lady by the name of Anna, who's half dead. Dr. Clemens administers a blood transfusion, and she begins to come to. And thank God, because we needed a beautiful woman to explain what's eating us. Turns out, Dracula's on board. It seems all is lost when Dracula attacks Captain Elliot's grandson, Toby, and turns him into a vampire. Maybe the captain has grounds for a lawsuit, because nobody warned him that you can't get too close to a vampire that's about to be fried in the sun. Yeah, you, you get burned too. And you know, watching his vampire grandson burn up, that causes a lot of emotional distress too, I imagine. I'm setting myself up for a lot of trouble later. Anyway, the captain's incapacitated because uh, emotions... So it's up to the rest of the crew to figure out how they're going to destroy Dracula. Clemens, Anna, Wojciech, and the Irish fella come up with a plan to keep Dracula from making landfall. They put up a valiant effort, but they are unsuccessful. Clemens is able to incapacitate Dracula long enough for him and Anna to jump overboard. The Demeter crash lands into Whitby Harbor, and the legend begins. Meanwhile, it turns out that Anna was turning into a vampire this entire time. So, she decides to sail adrift into the sun. And Clemens vows to destroy Dracula, inserting himself into a mythos that he never existed in in the first place. <sighs> this movie was great. Until the last five or ten minutes. Up until then, it did everything right. The visuals were great, very reminiscent of the Dracula Hammer horror films. The cast is superb. I loved Corey Hawkins in his role, and it was great to see Liam Cunningham do something other than Sir Davos. Dalmatian is always great in everything he does. Some of the critics complained about the slow pacing of the film, and I don't think they know what they're talking about. I personally loved the slow burn and the anticipation and the atmosphere that was building before the reveal of Backtrack. Speaking of, I was totally cold with the design. I've heard some folks say that he was mostly practical effects. I've heard others say that it was actually mostly CG. It worked for me either way. I thought it looked good. It was a different, risky take, but it paid off. If it was CG, it definitely looked better than most of the Marvel movies that are coming out nowadays. So this is why I lost favor with The Last Voyage of the Demeter, and why some of you monster fans are going to get very angry with me. I thought the ending of the film was a little racist but not for the reasons that you would think. Clemens gives us a speech on why he's in Eastern Europe. Basically, it boils down to Britain being progressive enough to allow him to go to medical school, but not open-minded enough to give him a job afterwards. So he had to go all the way to Romania to get a job, and was shocked to find that the Romanian king was racist. What? I don't believe it. I'm shocked and outraged. Oh, the humanity. The first man of African descent to graduate from medical school was James McClune, who graduated from Oxford University in 1837. 
which predated the setting of this movie by 60 years. Yes, I understand that Victorian England and much of the West was very racist by our modern understanding of the definition. I am not condoning it, nor am I trying to whitewash the crimes committed by Great Britain in their imperialist age. It does seem to me that black physicians at this time in England would have had a much better shake than in America in 1897. This is why Hollywood is in decline. This is lazy writing. They either did not research this or they deliberately misrepresented the historical context of this film in order to interject a message in this film that really shouldn't have been there in the first place because at the end of the day, this movie was better served as a popcorn flick. There's nothing wrong with having a message in your film, even if it's a message that audiences may not agree with. However, you can't tell your audiences what the message is. You have to show them. Films like Parasite, Get Out, and even The Other Guys are great examples of this. Each of these films has a deeper message that is conveyed through good storytelling and not beating your audiences over the head with the message. And it is also implied that Clemens will essentially go on to be a Van Helsing type character in a sequel that will never happen. It's racist because the writers of this film essentially robbed Dr. McLoon and other figures of their agency and completely erased their contributions to history while inserting a diversity quota into this movie that came straight from corporate. But Count, please shut up. If you don't stop complaining, they're not going to make any more monster movies. You're going to ruin everything. Don't you want to see more monster movies? I have to see the Bride of Frankenstein reboot. I have to see the Bride of Frankenstein reboot and play. Do we really trust Hollywood to get it right this time? The Dark Universe was, at best, a swing and a miss. Well, maybe with the exception of The Invisible Man with Elizabeth Moss, if that even counts as part of the Dark Universe. And sure, the stuff with the Monsterverse has been a lot of fun. I'm cautiously optimistic about the Monarch series on Apple TV. Everything else has been a complete failure. I really wanted to like Demeter. Before the third act, I would have given the movie a solid 8 out of 10. But because they did the whole weird modern Hollywood 2023 interjecting social commentary trope, uh, I walked away from it with a 5.5 out of 10. I gave it an extra half because, well... Bad vampire films are better than no vampire films, if you ask me. Whether or not you agree with my assessment of The Last Voyage of the Demeter, I hope you enjoyed this review. Originally, I was going to cover the Dracula films of 2023 in one movie review. However, I realized that I had a lot of deep thoughts about both films, and it would probably be more prudent to just split it off into a two-parter. So be sure to subscribe to Count Rahum Presents so that you can watch my conclusion of the Dracula 2023 movie review saga with my thoughts on Renfield. Until then, as far as things go when things go bump in the night, there are such things. From ghoulies and ghosties. From ghoulies and ghosties. And long legged beasties. And long legged beasties. And, and things, things that, that go bump, bump in, the in, night. The night. in the night. Good Lord! Deliver, Deliver us! us.